against the Hoos, went six and a third. Only allowed one earned run. Kelly Ayer will lead off and take strike one. There you see the starting lineup for Virginia. Air Hilton, Cabral up at the top. Sarah Kuhn had a home run earlier today against Southern Indiana. Sarah Kuhn's had a great start to her season, and I think with Air and Hilton here at the top, they've got to set the table to get some runners on for the hot hitter in Kuhn. Air earlier today was two for four. Junior from Mechanicsville, Virginia. And quickly, Beaver gets a strikeout to start the game off. Kayla Beaver coming inside on the lefty with that hard drop ball. It has some bite to it. And you don't see righties coming in on lefties very much, especially with a, especially with a drop ball. First pitch fouled away by Jade Hilton. Sophomore, also out of Virginia from Martinsville. All freshman selection in the ACC last year. This season off to a bit of a tougher start hitting 222, but her head coach said not to worry. Joanna Harden said they are not concerned about Hilton. She will get the hits. And even with her great freshman year, they still, still feel like she has room to grow, has gotten better over the offseason. That's ripped to short. Kahalen makes the throw for out number two. That's a great sign for Virginia. She barreled that ball up. It's a hard ground ball. But Kahalen making a routine play. Two gone for the talented freshman, Bella Cabral, out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. Average at 211 this season. Two and one. You see that 70 miles an hour on the inside corner, and that's going to be really tough for these righties to get their barrel to. Kayla Beaver, a 2-4-2 career ERA against the ACC, a perfect 3-0 record, including that win over Virginia. And the win against Georgia Tech last weekend. Two, pop foul. Good job by Cabral here early in the game. It doesn't matter whether you get a hit or not. You want to see a lot of pitches. Try to relay to your team what the pitcher's throwing. And she stays alive again.
Cabral. That could be trouble, and there's Hevlin, who could not complete the process, popped out of her glove, and Cabral is on first base. What a great play from Callie Hevlin. Doesn't end up getting the out, but gets a great read on this ball. Goes over her shoulder, trying to make a Sports Center top 10 catch. I thought she had it and just can't hang on when she hits the ground. But she is showing off her athleticism. First pitch, well struck out to center by Sarah Kuhn. But Lauren Johnson runs it down. Two in the inning. A base hit for Virginia, but nothing more. And we go to the bottom of the first. Scoreless in Tuscaloosa. On the year, four and a third innings pitched. One and no record. Jenna Johnson will lead off for the Crimson Tide. Got game one off, did Johnson. In fact, Alabama with a couple folks appearing here in this one that did not play against St. Thomas. <laughs> Bailey Dowling down there in the five spot. And good to see Marley Giles getting the start behind the plate and in the seven hole after missing a little bit of time opening weekend because of a small injury. Absolutely, it's always good to see players come back and it really just shows the depth that Patrick Murphy has. He's talked about how he has so many athletes on this team that can step in and play. And in a double header like this, you see new faces in the second game. Johnson, second team all SEC last year, was all SEC tourney as well. And she hits that sharply to the gap and all the way to the wall. Jenna Johnson has the leadoff double here in the first. Courtney Lane throws this curveball on the outside half of the plate to the all SEC Jenna Johnson. And she's excited for her Rhodes home opener in her fifth year, jumps on it, hits it into the right center gap, starts her team off with a double. And that's the thing about depth in a team is that it creates competition. When someone else comes in, they know they've got to perform because the person before them is performing and it just makes the whole team better. And I think that's what we're seeing with Alabama so far this season. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit later about the crowded outfield for the Crimson Tide as Kahalen takes a big cut on the first pitch. The sophomore from Trustville, Alabama. Earlier tonight against St. Thomas was one for four. 284 last year, hitting 350 currently. Kahalen high in the sky. Catch made by Weaver. Johnson tags up and heads for third. This is a quality at bat from Kinley Kahalen. It's as good as a sacrifice bunt. She hits it all the way out to the warning track, just a little bit under it. But you want to have a productive out in the two spot and move that runner because now Abby Dukesher is in a situation where a sack fly scores a run. And the sophomore Abby Dukesher is used to driving in runs. Eight RBI already this year, North Dakota native. You see the numbers last season, 257 batting average. Only started in five games in 2023, but right now making her seventh start of 2024 and hitting 524. And sometimes you see players and it's where it's difficult for them to get into a rhythm when they're not an everyday starter. Coming in and pinch hitting is a very tough role. And Abby Dukesher had a transition coming from South Dakota all the way here. So finding a little bit more of herself this season in that everyday starter role. Entering tonight, Dukesher was seventh in the SEC in batting average, 10th in slugging. Three for four against St. Thomas with an RBI. And that's foul tipped into the glove. Might have missed it all together, and that's a strikeout for Courtney Lane. 
Yeah, Courtney Lane doing a good job here of being almost effectively wild. This is up and out, nowhere near the zone, but you can tell Dukeshire was expecting something a little bit closer and trying to protect on two strikes. A big strikeout of one of Alabama's RBI producers. Lauren Essman. First pitch ball to the fifth year from Kalamazoo, Michigan. The Michigan transfer has been swinging a hot bat to start 2024, hitting 375, seven RBIs, had a couple doubles earlier against St. Thomas. Esman puts a charge in it. Esman sends it out. Yeah, she's swinging a hot bat. Two run homer, two nothing tied. You were right on cue, Gray. Lauren Esman is seeing a huge ball right now. Two doubles earlier and starts this game with a two run home run. It's a curveball out of the hands of Courtney Lane that just does not run enough to that outside part of the plate. It's left over the middle. And Lauren Esman says, thank you. A home run over center field wall. And that's how you set the tone in the first inning. Two run blast for Lauren Esman. And now Bailey Dowling, another senior on this team, St. Joseph, Illinois native. Second team all conference a few years ago. Off speed folder 0 and 2. That was the first home run for Lauren Esman at Alabama. And Dowling rips it. Air able to track it down to end the inning. But the tide comes out on fire. A two run. Number three. As Macy Eaton takes strike one. Five, six, seven due up for Virginia. Clearwater tournament is a highlight at the beginning of the season every year because we get to see some of the best teams match up on the first and second weekend out. And we woke up this morning, Kaylee, and watched some just absurd softball down in Florida. Georgia came back from Oklahoma State, 1-7-4. LSU Northwestern, Tigers won 13-12. And even just now, this isn't in Clearwater, but out in Tucson, Arizona just walked off Arkansas on a wild pitch, 3-2. So it's been a day of learning across the conference, I'd say. And I think at the beginning of the season, there's going to be growing pains for every team, whether it be top 10, top 25, whoever it is. So it's just fun to see them match up at the beginning of the season and just go best on best. Beaver starts off the second with a strikeout as Macy Eaton sits down. Kayla Beaver coming in with that drop curve to the lefty, falls off the table. A really great pitch for the strikeout. That'll bring up the senior from Roanoke, Virginia, Abby Weaver. <laughs> Weaver on the year hitting 375. <laughs> 284 career hitter against ranked foes. And to your point, Kaylee, talking about what is essentially a fact-finding mission the first couple weekends, a lot of people are asking questions about the UCLA Bruins. They fell tonight to Georgia 7-2 after beating Florida State earlier. Back to Beaver, two gone. But people have questions about one of the greatest programs in the history of the sport. And I think UCLA is just trying to find their way, especially in the circle. They're replacing Brooke Yanez, Megan Faramo, and it's kind of difficult whenever you're, you're trying to replace legends like that and find who is gonna be that ace who rises up and wants a Friday night start. Yeah. 
But again, it's kind of just like what UCLA are we going to get? They played good against Florida State, but a very high scoring game. 14-10, that was a football score. Not as well against Georgia, but not to take anything away from Georgia, they are hitting the ball so well right now. 0-2 count on the junior Shelby Barbie. And you mentioned trying to figure out life after legends. Alabama kind of doing the same thing with the graduation of Montana Fouts. Patrick Murphy has said this is a full staff and he's not afraid to go by committee. But so far, it's been the Beaver Show. A couple strikeouts in the inning and three tonight for Kayla Beaver. And we go Need motoring around all the way home. The junior from Three Rivers, Michigan. Big old cut on the first pitch from Courtney Lane. Hevlin now hitting 333 on the year, but 10 RBIs. And of her six hits, four have gone for extra bases. Six, seven, eight, due up for the Crimson Tide. And you got to have somebody like a Callie Hevlin at the bottom of your lineup to get things going down there and score runners and keep the defense on their toes, keep the pitcher on her toes. Allie Hevelin, a former Michigan Gatorade Player of the Year, as we talked about earlier tonight, getting better and better each season in her career. Back to the circle, and the easy throw for Lane, one down. Great job by Lane to field her position. Come back and get the first out this inning. Here's the sophomore Marley Giles out of Clanton, Alabama. As we talked about earlier, only three plate appearances and one at bat in Atlanta after tweaking something in the opener. 0 for 1 with a couple walks. And Marley Giles is a player that I think Alabama fans should be really excited about. Had a home run at the World Series last year in her freshman season, and a lot of potential there to tap into with a really good arm behind the plate. And a really good eye as well. One of the more interesting stats from fall ball that I heard in the, I believe it was five or six fall ball games, Marley Giles had 10 walks. Down 0-2, and she'll stay alive. There is already action in the Virginia bullpen. Not necessarily a big surprise. Coach Harden said they've got a plan. They will use as many arms as they need to. Yeah, she really talked about the matchups and how they think about who's going to have success and getting their pitchers to buy into the fact that nothing is ever personal. It's always tactical. Every decision they make has evidence and thought behind it. And Coach Harden spent a lot of time talking about how important weekends like this, last weekend in Columbia, how important they are for ACC play. As Giles gets hit, and she'll head to first. Yeah, this is a curveball from Courtney Lane that she's trying to get in on that inside corner, but it just runs a little bit too much. And that's one of those quality at bats 
that we've been highlighting for Alabama. And you see the 12s in the crowd. It's Emma Broadfoot on her senior day. The senior from Danville, Alabama, second year in the program after transferring from North Alabama. <laughs> 0 for 4 on the weekend, or I should say on the year, but does have three walks. Drew a couple against St. Thomas. That's on the ground to short. Well played by Hilton coming in. Two gone. This is a slop and run. Marley Giles stealing second. And Emma Broadfoot doing a good job of getting that ball on the ground. Moving her over for the freshman of the week, Lauren Johnson. Yeah, Johnson just phenomenal in Atlanta. Freshman from Franklin, Tennessee. Centennial High School. And Patrick Murphy talked about it. A big reason why Johnson got as many chances as she did is because Kristen White was not available opening weekend. Unsure if we'll see her in an Alabama uniform this weekend, but that gave Johnson an opening and she took advantage. Again, it's that depth for Alabama, especially in the outfield. But when you have a freshman, you never know their first weekend, are they gonna come out antsy, maybe fearful, or are they gonna come out excited? And Lauren Johnson just looks so happy to be in a Bama uniform. And it really is an interesting dilemma, more or less, for Patrick Murphy. I'm not sure I wanna call it a problem because it's a good thing, but White, Lauren Johnson, Jenna Johnson, Marissa Pruitt, Kendall Clark, Kat Grill, even Lauren Esmond's in the outfield tonight. Just so many options for the Crimson Tide. Well, anything can happen over a 60 to 70 game season. You may have a couple players go down with injuries and you wanna make sure that you have people who can step in and fill that role with kind of a seamless transition. And this non-conference part of the season is where you really find out who's gonna be your everyday starters and that competition in the outfield is making these players better. So Lauren Johnson on first, older sister Jenna at the plate. Johnson doubled and scored in the first. And time called. And I believe a pitching change on the way for Virginia. So the plan is in motion.
kids the last two seasons. And Coach Harden says she wouldn't be shocked if more go into the tournament this year. Well, the Alameda really led the way for that conference, winning their first national championship back in 2018. But I think it's been Clemson, Duke, and Virginia Tech elevating their game and their athletic department putting investment into the softball programs that's elevated that conference as a whole because you, now you see teams like Virginia, Louisville, Georgia Tech who are also investing to stay competitive. That one fouled by Kaylin Jones, the junior. And Coach Harden talked about it. She said a couple years ago, the team that she has right now at Virginia would have been top three, top four in the ACC. But because of how deep the league is, they're trying to get up to the top half. Well, with Duke and Clemson starting their softball programs and hiring Marissa Young, John Rittman, like amazing coaches in the game of softball who you knew were going to go out and recruit and build those programs, it's made the league deep and it's tough to compete in. Yeah, Notre Dame always good, Louisville. Great last year, as you see, Joanna Harden, eighth year head coach at Virginia. North Carolina has had a nice showing in Clearwater this weekend. Georgia Tech improving. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Kayla Beaver. Kayla Bieber has been finding so much success on the inside half of the plate against these lefties. It's coming in 70 miles an hour and they just can't catch up with that drop curve at the bottom of the zone. That'll bring up the senior, Leah Boggs. Mansfield, Ohio native, first team all region back in 2022. Got a game off earlier today against Southern Indiana. That could be trouble and it's just out of the reach of Hevlin. Boggs is aboard with one out and she'll turn the lineup over here in the third. Yeah, this is just Leah Boggs hitting with experience. She just knows that she needs to get her barrel there against a 70 mile per hour, mile per hour fastball. Not try to do too much. Kayla Bieber will provide the power. Great job at the bottom of the lineup to turn it over. Back to Kelly Ayer, strikeout victim in the first. Kaylee, to put a button on the ACC conversation, not only is the league getting better and better, but think about next year. When you bring in Stanford, you bring in Cal, those are two quality programs. Stanford in the top 10 right now. Cal on the come up with second year head coach Chelsea Spencer. And I loved hearing Coach Harden touch on that because she said she's excited for it. She's ready for the challenge. She wants the league to grow because she's a competitor. And so I can only imagine how Lonnie Alameda feels. Pete Demore excited for better teams to come into the league and to compete with. Well, Virginia last year was not far off from an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. They beat Florida State in Tallahassee, got to 28 and 14, but then lost eight of their last 10. So that one just outside. And in the day and age of RPI, strength of schedule, it's so valuable to bring in a team like Cal, a team like Stanford, because just playing them and maybe them going on to win games helps you out. Ball four, walk to air, two aboard. Coach Tilka and his offense making an adjustment. Yeah. 
Kelly Ayer taking those pitches. It's really hard to decide whether to swing or not against a pitcher that's throwing 70 miles an hour. So a lot of times you see them swinging at balls, but these hitters are, are staying within themselves and staying disciplined. Jade Hilton, 0 for 1 tonight. Ground out back in the first. And one more note on Virginia in the NCAA tournament. They also know games like this, games like last weekend at South Carolina, those will help the RPI this year. Dowling, there's one chance for two not in time. Great heads up play by the senior Bailey Dowling trying to get a double play, but only ends up with one, splits the runners at second. Comes across, getting this ground ball over to Callie Hevlin, trying to turn it up, but just can't get the speedy Hilton over at first. Now Bailey Dowling patrolling over at third base. Throughout her Alabama career, she's played second, played short, been the DP, but this year over at the hot corner as Cabral steps in with a great chance for Virginia to find a response. Cabral singled in the first, hitting 333 with runners in scoring position this year. Great pitch by Kayla Beaver, painting the corner. Got her looking. Kayla Beaver shows the fire. And she gets out of a jam for Jamie Allred, including finishing it off with a strikeout of Jackie Trana. Yeah, she called Coach Allred just one of the greatest pitching minds in the game. Coach Harden and her have complete trust between each other because they have that coach-player relationship and now coach-coach relationship. So they've been through it all together. Ducher with the flair. One gone. And it's always cool to see a player go be an assistant for their previous head coach, like Kayla Bro and Patrick Murphy, because you know that program through and through. You know the coach through and through. And so it's kind of easy to step in. I think with Caleb Rowe, it's so interesting, though, spending 10 years in broadcasting and then deciding to get back into college coaching. What an awesome story and an awesome journey for her and her family. First pitch ball to Lauren Esman. Yeah, and there are a lot of connections on the field with that game back in 2014. And that was a good Alabama team that lost in the Champ Series to Florida. But Alabama Director of Operations, Jaden Spencer, was batting cleanup. Director of Player Development, Ryan I. Murray, pinch hit in that game. And Coach Harden was very excited to discuss that. <laughs> Such a fun memory from her time back at McNeese. Who wouldn't be coming into Road Stadium, getting a win? over the 2014 Crimson Tide, who you mentioned made it to the Champ Series. But also I think it speaks to who these head coaches are as people off the field, that their players want to come back and coach for them. Got multiple alumni in the dugout for Alabama, all red in Virginia's dugout. I just think that's so cool. It's really becoming a growing trend across the country. You look at players taking assistant jobs at their alma mater, often for their former head coach, Victoria Hayward, new hitting coach at Washington for Heather Tarr. And I think that's part of the reason for the growth of the game across the country is because you have players who come out of big name programs like an OU, like in Alabama, a Florida, and then they go and impact the other programs that they go coach at. And they instill that culture and it just elevates where, wherever they go. So I think that's a big reason for why you've seen softball get better is because you've got a lot of players going into coaching. 
And I didn't even mention our broadcasting friend, Francesca Inea, taking an assistant coach job at Florida this year. Really good sign for the sport. And it gives us plenty of fun stories to tell. Payoff to Esman. That's heading foul and just out of the reach of Jones. The other thing good for the sport, all the great games this weekend, we referenced Texas, Tennessee earlier. The Longhorns hold on 2-1 over the Lady Vols. So a somewhat surprising 0-2 day for Tennessee, lost to Stanford and Texas. Yeah, two really close games though, and Tennessee was absolutely in both of those matchups. Nice battle here between Kuzo and Esman. Esman right to short, and what a catch by Hilton for out number two. This is a really big out for Kuzo, going right at Lauren Esman, challenging her, and she hits it hard, but Hilton is ready for it over at shortstop. Great play, shoestring catch for the second out. Two gone for Bailey Dowling. Dowling lined out to center back in the first. And it seems like Virginia is offering Dowling a healthy dose of off-speed pitches. Bailey Dowling is always gonna be the player in the lineup that gets the best pitches from the opposing team. Seems like they always throw her the best sequence when she's in there. Dowling fouls it off, stays alive. Another change up. Another one, two. Dowling to short. Hilton will handle. Side retired. Alabama still leads 2 0, but Virginia's bats have a chance to get right back in it when we return. But facing the heart of the order, 4 5 6. You can just tell her demeanor when she's in the circle. She's locked in. She's about her business, makes quick work. And you add in the experience of being a fifth year. Kuhn jammed, and there's Broadfoot for out number one.
Here's the freshman, Macy Eaton, out of Wheelersburg, Ohio, 0 for 1. Struck out back in the second. Just outside the top 30 in the extra inning softball recruiting ranks for the class of 23. And there's Broadfoot again. Kayla Beaver using her defense this inning. Emma Broadfoot making some good plays. Coach Toka over in the third base coaching box, the assistant for Virginia. On the ground to short from Weaver and the throw from Cahalen is in time for a quick one, two, three inning for Kayla Beaver. Off to the bottom of the fourth, tied still up by two. Elena Botter, a pitcher Alabama saw last year in the World Series. Yeah, and I think she's gonna be one of the most impactful transfers that we see this season because she does have the ability to, to be a true ace and to pitch a lot of innings and kind of put the staff on her back. And you just saw the SEC in the top 25. A lot of teams in those rankings and they're gonna continue to fluctuate. Tennessee losing twice today, Georgia undefeated in Clearwater so far. How about the rise of Missouri, Kentucky? That's line to short, Hilton's there, one down. And one more note, not pictured Mississippi State, who maybe has an argument after sweeping a midweek doubleheader against the ranked Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Again, it just goes to show how good the teams up and down the conference in the SEC are. They have the ability to beat any team on any given day. Marley Giles was hit by a pitch in the second. One and one. Basically, to sum up everything we've said, conference play in the SEC this year is going to be pure madness. And it's only going to get crazier with conference realignment, adding Oklahoma and Texas. Oh, yeah, them. <laughs> They're coming, too. One and two in the polls. I say two. I'm expecting Texas to move up after beating Tennessee tonight. Giles puts a charge in it, and just off the glove of Weaver. Marley Giles will stop it second. One out double for Alabama. Marley Giles has been watching her teammates find success in the right center gap, and she wants in on it. She takes this outside pitch, barrels it up, hits it hard. In and out of the glove of the right fielder, and Giles has herself a double. Man, in the two games for Alabama's offense, 13 total hits, eight have gone for extra bases, including all three against Virginia. Here's Emma Broadfoot on the ground to short. Hilton in time, and Giles takes third, two gone. That's great base running by Marley Giles. This ball is in front of her by all rights, probably should have stayed at second, but she's got speed. And a very heads up base running to make it to third, and that gives Emma Broadfoot a productive out. And puts a runner at third for Lauren Johnson, who walked in the second. Wind has been mostly still for game two of our doubleheader. There you see that lethal drop ball from Kuzo. Hey. 
Well, Johnson tried to get tricky, but bunted it foul. Lauren Johnson stopped by the second baseman and the flip is in time from Cabral. The freshman on the infield for Virginia. Five strikeouts. Seven, eight, nine due up for Virginia. Starting off with the junior, Shelby Barbie. Strikeout victim back in the second. Love to see the Virginia dugout get super excited about that foul ball. That's really good contact. She's obviously seeing it, and they need to get something going offensively. But there's another strikeout for Beaver. Six tonight, one down here in the fifth. Kayla Beaver just continues to mix it up. She was coming in under the hands. And you saw Barbie make a little adjustment, hit a foul ball. So Beaver says, OK, I'll go outside and get you swinging on that. Kaylin Jones fouls off the first pitch. Junior from Grayson, Georgia. 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout. Beaver once again just hammering that inside corner to the lefties. That time misses high, two and two. Not go. Full count. Good eye by Jones. That pitch is close. Good at bat from Kalen Jones. Hevlin with the stop. Got her. Another fantastic defensive play by Callie Hevlin over at second base. We saw Cabral with the diving stop in the hole last inning, and then Callie Hevlin going and getting this ground ball in the hole this inning, stopping Kaitlyn Jones from getting on base, and that's so impressive because of the speed of Jones.
Hevelin got up very quickly, delivered a good throw all around, just an awesome play. And it keeps speed off base for Boggs, who already has a single today. That was back in the third. You know, the other thing, Kaylee, that we haven't really talked about, the efficiency of Kayla Bieber. That was just pitch 58 here tonight. She's been pounding the zone, throwing a lot of strikes. Not afraid to challenge these hitters on the plate. Boggs popped up. Broadfoot's there. Inning over. Another three up, three down frame for Bieber. And Alabama will come back. They've had injuries. They've had adversity. They've had to bounce back. So they have that perspective. And they're able to offer that valuable experience to the youngsters on this team. And the returners also have Women's College World Series experience, which is really invaluable at this point to go into that environment and know what that's like and what it takes to get there. Well, Johnson has shown her experience tonight. One for one has reached twice. And that's ripped and fair. Jenna Johnson will hightail it to second for another double tonight. And Alabama's in business here in the fifth. This is why Jenna Johnson is in that leadoff spot, because she can hit the ball hard, and she has speed. She hits it right down that line, smokes it past the third baseman, and she's motoring all the way to second, getting herself in scoring position with no outs. And that means Alabama doesn't have to use a sack bunt to get her over. She's already in scoring position. What a great at bat. And in scoring position for Kenley Kahalen, who feels somewhat due 0 for 2 against Virginia. Overall today, 1 for 6. And Kahalen sends that high in the sky. Weaver finds it. And Jenna Johnson will tag up and get to third. Kahalen's just had a few near misses that are, are almost gone. Just a little bit under it, but good enough to move Johnson over to third with one out. So another quality at bat and a moved runner. Basically a carbon copy of how the game started for the Alabama offense. Jenna Johnson double. Kahalen moving her with a long fly ball. And now a runner on third with one out for Abby Dukesher, who's 0 for 2. There you see the situational numbers. In this ballgame, Alabama 1 for 8 with runners on. Virginia 0 for 3. Last weekend in Atlanta, Alabama hit 348 with runners in scoring position. Off-speed Fulder, two and one. That off-speed has been looking good tonight. Coach Harden told us that Kuzo was working on it, but she's found it here at Road Stadium. Goes right back to it. Do you dare go a third time? I wouldn't, but that's why I'm not a pitching coach. And she does. I think it's one of those things where if Dukeshire does hit the changeup, it's likely not barreled up in the gap. Payoff from Kuzo. Future stays alive. 
Action continues in the Virginia bullpen. That's Madison Harris over there. Dukesher out to right. That'll drop. Jenna Johnson heads for home and slides in safely. RBI for Abby Dukesher, and it's 3 0 in the fifth. And this is why Kuzo was relying so hard on that changeup because the moment she brings something hardened in the zone, Abby Dukesher, the RBI producer for this team, barrels it up, just gets it into right field enough to where it's out of the reach of Abby Weaver. And Jenna Johnson. The first batter that Harris will face is Lauren Esman. Esman, one for two tonight. A two run homer in the first and a really well hit liner that Hilton caught over at short back in the third. And by the way, Kinley Pate has entered the ball game to pinch run for Dukesher over at first. Transfer from Samford, sophomore out of Northport, just across the bridge. Seeing that velocity from Harris. Spinny rise ball coming in 66. There's that change up down in the dirt. It's really rare that you could see a pitcher throwing 68 to 70 and still have a change up that's under 50. Two two from Harris. Esman stopped over at third and a nice play by Kuhn for out number two. Kuhn doing a good job coming across, getting a hard ground ball, and getting that second out of the inning. This Virginia defense has been mighty impressive tonight. See here, Kuhn feeling her position, reaches out to get that one, and makes a great throw over to first. Dowling pops that foul. And for whatever reason, Virginia has run into trouble in the fifth all year long. Now, 28 runs allowed this season. 13 of them have come in this frame. Not sure there's any real science to it, just one of those weird things. It's always so interesting when a team has a stat like that because there's no way they are aware of it. But well, I guess they are now. I'm sorry. <laughs> they will be after this game. This is what happens when you give me a full week to prep. Dowling pops it up. And Hilton, oh wow. Able to hold on, but lost her footing. And the inning's over. But Alabama adds a run, and we go to the sixth. Three nothing tied in Tuscaloosa. We're seeing a very talented Virginia team on the field tonight, sitting at number nine in that poll, and just shows you the depth of the ACC. And Virginia will have some chances. They've got Clemson at home in March in conference play. They don't have to play Florida State. No three-game series with Virginia Tech, although a couple midweeks are scheduled. Always good for a rivalry. No Louisville on here either. They do have to go to Duke in April. I was glad we're keeping those in-state rivalries alive. I think teams are even going to still try to do that after conference re realignment. Hopefully we'll still see 
OU, OSU, Arizona, Arizona State. Two two from Beaver, just outside, full count. Seeing our pitch clock added to the scoring at the top left of the screen. Very cool addition and great job by our crew. Yeah, 20 seconds. Beaver getting close. Air grounds that to short and Kahalen could not field it cleanly. Lead off a board for Virginia here in the sixth. Kahalen likes to go to that backhand. I think fielding this one in the middle of her body might have been a little bit of a better decision. It kind of pops up on her. She's not able to ground it or to field it cleanly. We'll see how it's scored because with the speed of air and how deep Kahalen was, I'm not sure a great throw would have even gotten her. And Air does have great speed. Four for four in stolen bases this year. It is officially an E6. Back to Beaver. Throw to second is not. Oh, got her. I beg your pardon. What an athletic play by Kayla Beaver coming out of the circle turning and throwing this ball to second base. And we just talked about the speed of air. Great play to get that lead runner. Looks like she does have her. Another example tonight of Gray Needs Glasses. Cabral to third, chance for two again. There's one and the turn from Hevlin ends the inning. Alabama turning up a double. Benefit of a doubt. No problem for a first baseman. She scooped it up. It's Hevlin, Giles, and Broadfoot. Senior day at Alabama. One of the cooler traditions that the Crimson Tide does. Each senior gets her own individual game. Alabama's had to fit a lot in this year because there are so many seniors on the team this season. What's that year where you're seeing the end of COVID? You've got fifth years and fourth years. This will be the last time we see those COVID fifth years, but it makes for a lot of seniors. There you see the number nine seniors for the Crimson Tide. Two freshmen, eight sophomores, three juniors. One of those juniors, Callie Hevlin. And she takes it for a ball, two and two. Off to Hevlin and she will foul it back. Six pitchers on staff for Virginia. Madison Harris is the third to appear tonight after Courtney Lane got the start. And Julia Cuzo pitched well in relief and Harris gets a strikeout of Hevlin to start off the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, really good pitch on the outside corner from Harris here. High heat, throwing it around 65. And just painting that corner for the swing and miss. And Maddie Harris is one of those pitchers that Coach Harden really likes. Gave her the start against South Carolina. Feels like she's developed and continues to get better even though she's a senior. Yeah, Harris last year, just three appearances. This is her second 
of 2024. Giles sends that high in the sky. Catch made by Cabral for out number two. And here is Emma Broadfoot on her senior night. The Danville, Alabama native, the lover of fried cabbage, according to her fact sheet. Has been skydiving. Good for her. I'm good. I don't need to do that, but <laughs> proud of you, Emma. Really great career at North Alabama before transferring here. One of their everyday starters. But always dreamt of wearing the Bama jersey. Entered the portal and Coach Murphy gave her that opportunity. How cool. Fouls that one back one and two. I like this one. She has flown in a hot air balloon. I would like to know the story behind That's that one. I, again, I'm good, but. <laughs> I mean, I cry on small planes, so. Broadfoot. So many cool facts here. Wants to become a high school English teacher and coach. Loves to go hunting. And wears the best number in college softball. And she goes fishing right there as Harris gets the strikeout to end the inning. Last chance for Virginia. They trail it 3-0 off to the seventh. She's helped herself with some nice defensive plays and her infield has had her back at times, too. Double play in the last frame. Hevlin has stopped a few sharp grounders. Well, she really pounds the zone, throws a lot of strikes, and we highlighted the strikeouts, but she's also made quick work of some hitters with some miss hits. So got a lot of outs in different ways, but you can tell she likes to work quickly, has a quick pace to her. Seventh inning, though, Virginia has the meat of the order up. Four, five, six, starting off with Sarah Kuhn, the junior from Elmira, New York. We were talking to Coach Harden about Sarah Kuhn. Great as a freshman, was the first ever selection from Virginia on the ACC All-Freshman team. Tougher year in 2023, went down to Florida to play in the Florida Gulf Coast League and came back to UVA this year kind of feeling a little reset. And she'll squeeze that one through the left side. Lead off single for Sarah Kuhn right on cue. Now Sarah Kuhn is the hot hitter for Virginia right now. She's seeing the ball really well. Gets quick hands to the inside pitch. Drives it on the ground and finds herself on first base. And you highlighted her, her experience in the summer league and how that freed up her mind. And you can tell she's just swinging a hot bat because she's playing freely. First pitch strike to Macy Eaton. New right fielder as well for the Crimson Tide. Larissa Pruitt has gone out for Esmond. Oh, Giles. Trying to catch Sarah Kuhn off first. Eaton 0 for 2. Strike out and a ground out. To Beaver, throw to second in time. No chance for a double play, but the lead runner is retired. The second time we've seen Beaver, Beaver make a play like that. Showing her athleticism, moving outside the circle. Gets this miss hit ground ball and throws it over to Callie Hevlin at second. No chance to get the runner at first. 
but awesome to get that lead runner. Weaver, that's down and right. And Virginia will bring the tying run to the plate here in the seventh. Abby Weaver went up ready to hit in that at bat. The first strike she sees and she stings it into right field. And now conversations galore. Coach Harden talking to what she called her offensive coordinator. Looks like a pinch runner will enter in for Virginia. Lauren Van Ash, a senior from Chesapeake. So the Cavaliers are in business. Down three in the seventh, but the tying run stands at the plate in the form of the junior, Shelby Barbie. Barbie is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts tonight. Two hits on the year, one is a home run. And out comes Alabama pitching coach, Lance McMahon. This does harken back a little bit to the finale at the Buzz Classic in Atlanta. Caleb Beaver was absolutely zooming through the first six innings. Rain started to fall, seventh inning got dicey. There was the Larissa Pruitt catch that robbed a grand slam, but prior to that seventh inning, the Yellow Jackets really hadn't touched Caleb Beaver. And the seventh inning is always the toughest inning to close out a game. It's really difficult no matter who you're playing. Nobody wants to lose. And we know Virginia is well coached. They've got a good approach here in the seventh inning. And I think Kayla Beaver just trying to be a little too fine. She missed two pitches in a row and Lance McMahon heading out to the circle to calm her down, get her back in her zone. A 2-0 count. For Shelby Barbie, two and one. It's a really good pitch to come out of that coaching conference with. You can tell she had the velocity behind it. Three and one. Barbie out to right. There's Pruitt. Catch made. Both runners will tag up. And the throw got away from Kahalen. Now Van Ash will come in to score. And the Cavaliers are on the board here in the seventh. What a quick turnaround there. I thought Larissa Pruitt was going to double off and get this runner at second for a double play. But instead, the ball scoots away from Kahalen and allows a runner to score. This ball is hit deep, enough for this runner to move. But again, just not fielded cleanly by Kinley Kahalen, and that allows Van Ash to score. I have to say, that is an incredibly gutsy move by Weaver to tag up at first. If Kahalen fields that cleanly, 
the tag is relatively easy and the game's over. I definitely agree with you. High risk, high reward, because it causes a, a run to score and causes a little bit of havoc. And on the play, an error is charged to Kahalen, allowing Van Ash to score. So runner on second, two outs. And here's Kalen Jones. Pinch runner out there. Kamira Woody Jiggets standing on second. Jones is 0 for 2, but her last time up was that well hit ground ball that was stopped by Kahalen back in the fifth. Virginia has given themselves a chance here in the seventh. Tying run at the plate. Kayla Beaver trying to work her way out of it. <laughs> to Kahalen, throw to first in time. And Alabama holds off Virginia to stay in.